So I'm excited to just show you what we're on. We're, we're really, what we're, we're fundamentally trying to do is we're trying to build a, a Ravens layer for the internet. So uh, I think we've learned that blockchains are great at representing assets and securing representation of those assets. That could be virtual currency, that could be tokenized assets. And we've seen that smart contracts are really great at managing the, the transfer and distribution of those assets. But really to interact with the real world, we need real world agreements. And those agreements need to be legal agreements. They need to interact with traditional systems, including courts and judges and uh, juries. And they need to be interpret interpretable. And, and that's what we're trying to do. And we're really trying to push forward the legal industry and legal agreements more broadly from static documents to really dynamic systems uh, that manage complex commercial tasks. And our approach to doing this is really, uh, it's, it, it derives in four steps. So we're taking the existing legal agreements, we're pulling them out of what they're tracking right now, which is Microsoft Word files, PDFs. Uh, we're relying on a blockchain to store references to them and other decentralized uh, uh, file sharing systems. Uh, we developed a legal markup language that can take the logic that most lawyers have in their brains and turn them into uh, little bits of machine uh, markup uh, that can actually outline what parts of the agreement is necessary, what are the key variables, and I'll show you some examples of that. And then we're using, in, in part, a blockchain to manage the execution and reasoning part of that logic. So we use a smart contract to actually process things like payments, transfer assets, um, store signatures to make sure that we know that the agreement is being executed. Uh, we can use other types of systems to manage workflow. And ultimately, we want to reduce this down to an API of some sort where you can reference a, a template, uh, any template, it's marked up, you can pass through the variables, and you can uh, automatically generate an agreement. And we think that that can support an entire ecosystem for the legal industry. Uh, beyond just document assembly, we've seen a lot of them really down tonight, uh, but thinking about different ways to surface how we engage with legal agreements. So imagine feeding into and then Amazon Alexa, an entire agreement interacting with it in some sort of way and outputting you know, machine readable uh, agreement, but also machine readable as well. And we think that this can feed into uh, notification systems, which are large problems for in house counsel and, and large corporate departments, and also regulatory compliance over time. Um, and we're hoping that we can reimagine this exceptionally large industry that has not really seen much in terms of innovation uh, through a collaborative, open, and networked approach, which I think resonates with the values of the EEA. Uh, so we're hoping to build agreements that are easy to reuse, easy to validate, easy to enforce, easy to review, and easy for people to collaborate on. So the lawyers aren't like shoemakers from the 1600s, all working on the same thing, but in their own little workshops. We're working together to streamline the cost of that. Uh, and we really have a modular and generic architecture, which means that soon any legal agreement that's out there today, including entire sets of documents, what we're going to call the uh, will be able to interact with these blockchain systems and leverage to the extent that they can, uh, smart contract based uh, systems. So this is an actual picture of a lawyer when they look at the law. <laughs> where, so a lot of these things may not seem uh, hugely innovative to you, but if you spend your day you know, 3,000 hours a year working on some of the drudgery uh, that a lot of lawyers do, uh, you'll see that what we're trying to accomplish is, is quite useful. And uh, we think that that can have real social benefits, right? So not just improving the day-to-day -day life of lawyers, uh, but decreasing legal costs, which is really important. Uh, reducing the risk of error. And error is a huge issue when it comes to lawyers. Lawyers are, are a lot like surgeons, precision really matters. And increasing access to legal services. So if we decrease the cost, a lot of legal services that people don't receive today can actually be received. And I think that's an incredibly important thing. Um, and we're really hoping to move the legal industry forward with open source tools, APIs, and all these applications that, that, that really use it as core of blockchain. And so first up, I'm going to show you is a repository of agreements and deals that we're developing. Uh, we've developed an, an editor basic IDE to create templates and a UI to make it easy for lawyers to generate agreements. And really, uh, a lot of the software developers are like, well, why don't lawyers just use GitHub? And the answer is, there's no effing way that lawyers can use GitHub. <laughs> <laughs> the Venn diagram of lawyers and programmers and Git the lawyers that are going to use GitHub is like zero. So, you know, <laughs> uh, so we have to simplify it down. That's a lot of what we're trying to do. Has to simplify tools that work well in the software context for an entire, uh, an entire new uh, 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 sector. And, and again, we haven't built the API yet, but that's the goal. Right? We're going to we're going to output this all as an API in, in some sort of way, so uh, so we can generate a whole bunch of different things. Uh, so well, fundamentally, we're we're quite, we're pragmatic idealists, and we really uh, are looking to the uh, Ethereum community, the blockchain-based community more generally to help us. So we're asking you to join us in on this mission, because you know, we really are building the future commercial law. This is the first real attempt at it. 
and we can't do it alone, uh, but we're pretty excited about it. So let me uh, show you a couple things. I'm going to brave, be brave and do a lot of demos. Uh, so this is an example of a template that we've created in Open Law. Uh, and this is a simple agreement for future equity, a basic financing document. We surface it up to our user interface, and I can simply you know, enter in the relevant information, which is not that exciting. But what is exciting is that there's right now four different types of this group. There's uh, safe set of discounts, safe set of caps, there's safe set of uh, MFN clauses. So there's a whole bunch of variations. So when a lawyer does today, they open up their drawer or you know, fold it on a computer, they find one that's uh, applicable, they modify it, use a word, they take some time, they pass it back and forth between clients. But you can imagine uh, using our system just actually clicking buttons. So just clicking an idea, does this, does this technical agreement have this factual situation that's present? If so, we can add in the information right there with using a markup language. If you want to change that and add in a different conditional, or what we would call a conditional, you can click, uh, simply click that and it changes the entire way that things can be distracted. So you can see up there, we've added in a conditional language, but now that we know that this factual situation is present, we can actually modify all these other portions of the agreement on the fly. So there's not a need to go through this back and forth contacting process. If we have a uh, standard language that we know should be in the agreement, we can simply just click and go from there. Um, and the reason we can do that is because we've reduced down this legal agreement into markdown, and then we've added on top of it our markup language. So things that are variables we've identified. So we know that in each one of these agreements, there's going to be a of a company that's, that's engaging in the safe. Uh, we also have uh, made it fairly easy to develop this logical relationship, right? To say, hey, this agreement has a discount. And so we can set what we call conditional, set it as discount, prompt the user or some other system with a question, which may be helpful, and then if it's true, then it outputs a and Once that's set, you can begin to uh, define that in other parts of the agreement. Uh, so if there is a discount in this agreement, we can add additional language to different spots, we can add additional calls, smart contracts, et cetera. So we think that's pretty interesting. And, and it's a uh, it's, it's, it's really expensive, so uh, you can also do calculations through, through the markup language, which is nice. If there's multiple conditionals, so if this factual situation is present and this one is not present, then output this. If both are present, then output something else. We can do all that type of logic, which is really fundamentally what a lot of lawyers are doing in their brains. They're going through this process that's either formal or informal that they learn over time in order to generate a legal work. Um, so this may not seem very much different than a lot of other, you know, what I would call over-the-counter legal solutions, which you may have seen, like legal and et cetera. Uh, and that's not all that exciting. We were, we were encouraged by being able to do this and being able to use a blockchain to manage this process, but it wasn't uh, all that exciting to us. So we took it to the next level, and since every single one of these agreements fundamentally reduces down to an object of some sort, and we've been able to actually group together a whole bunch of different legal templates into what we call a deal. So we can uh, actually not just manage one agreement using blockchain technology, but the entire set of agreements. So we have a whole bunch of templates that we spun together. I'm going to show you uh, a demo in a minute or so showing how you can execute an onboarding employee and have that employee sign an employee offer letter, sign a confidentiality and potential assignment agreement, sign an alternative dispute resolution agreement, which is very common. Um, receive a grant to restrict the stock, and also a board, or a hypothetical board, actually affirm the grant in that stock. And the payment won't happen every two weeks, it's going to happen using the smart contract that we've written uh, every minute. So we get paid every minute. Well, we, this is a demo, right? So for those that are seeking the through in the community, probably not practical to do, we just want to show it's kind of possible. So imagine instead of getting paid every two weeks, we can begin to imagine a world where we get paid every minute. Right? These possibilities are uh, to merge. Imagine instead of receiving your stock, if you were, do have stock in a part of a technology company, uh, when you leave the company, but having it best um, you know, every minute or two while you're working. So we can begin to imagine more real time dynamic systems. Uh, so this is the manifestation of the deal, uh, which is basically a collection of common variables or, uh, in a set of documents. And this conditional logic through a markup language means that we can. We can ask questions like, will this deal need additional agreements? And if so, we can call a template. So you can see down here, that it says, are there going to be additional agreements? Um, and then we can add some sub-questions, confidentiality agreement. If so, then add in this template, 
called confidentiality and intervention settlement agreement, dispute resolution. Right? Do you need a dispute resolution agreement? If so, then add in this template as well. And if we go to the draft mode, we can begin to just define all the common variables that this whole set of documents at one time. We can click uh, what, let me just set a couple things so you can see it. We can say we need multiple different agreements. And then it will all get generated on the fly. Right? So all there's a common mapping that we've created throughout this entire set. So I don't want to bore you by filling out a long form. So I've, I've pre-filled it out. But here's what a pre-filled out agreement. But if I filled out that form and I click that start, then every one of these agreements is automatically filled out. And whatever logic I set on the first page is, is, is traced through the entire set of documents. So in the first agreement, since I set that we wanted to have additional agreements, it changes the language here, it changes the language towards the bottom of the agreement as well. Uh, but it also threads it all the way through the entire set of documents. And as we begin to put this all together, we can begin to get and match up with the threads. So I just need to change a couple things because the timing. So we are going to execute this. So I'm just setting the time period when this person will be paid. So what I'm doing here is, um, in order to show the smart contract execution, where we'll transfer payment to the, to the worker, along with the transfer of this tokenized stock, I'm just setting the time period so it can run infinitely. Uh, and we still need to solve this issue of how to actually stop them, or we're working on that as opposed to a solution. Um, so I think that's good to go. So let me just give you like an overview of what's happening here. So we're onboarding ABC Inc. at the company, is onboarding new worker, James. What? Okay, yeah, Jane Smith, she's going to be an awesome officer because every company needs one and to make a company awesome. And she's going to get paid 21 ether per second. Um, for the next 10 minutes, um, sorry, per minute for the next 10 minutes. It's going to be sent to her Ethereum uh, uh, wallet, which is, you can see now, is, it's uh, MetaMask, this is James' it's wallet, it's completely empty, um, relying on the smart contract found at this address. So this means if, if there's a dispute related to this uh, payment flow, well, I can walk into a court, the judge uh, and the jury will understand what's going on. Uh, so we can actually start tying together things that are happening in blockchain, we think those are things that are familiar to traditional legal structures, uh, which is important, particularly as you begin to think about onboarding massive amounts of uh, uh, resources onto the blockchain. Um, then there's other agreements that, that you'll sign. Uh, those agreements will have their, their signature stored to the blockchain, along with the actual uh, object related to that agreement uh, stored, a reference to that stored in the blockchain, and then other uh, bits stored in our test. Uh, we'll also have an alternative dispute resolution agreement, much the same as the confidentiality agreement. Uh, the restricted stock grant will allocate, uh, hypothetically, 60,000 tokenized shares uh, to this worker and 48 equal installments with 1,250 uh, shares every minute, uh, provided that she's still working for the company for the next 10 minutes. And that's, that's a safe assumption. Uh, and, it, and it will be sent again to her recipient address, and this is the smart contract that's covered. So legally, this may not, be, may not be significant to those who are not lawyers in the room, but we're basically incorporating by reference these, uh, these agreements and uh, these smart contracts into the agreement. So they become part and parcel of the agreement. And once we do that, uh, we, we, can, we should be able to send it out for signature. So Jacqueline and I are both going to sign it. It's going to take a minute for us to process and, and get our inboxes. Uh, we've also simplified it that we can have up to three people signing this. And then once all three people sign it, all the uh, smart contract execution will occur. So let's, let's cross our fingers. Hey, Aaron. Yeah. During that minute. Yeah. How, how does the negotiation fit into this? Or does this turn into something that would take it or leave it out of context? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, so one thing that we, I didn't mention, I didn't show, is it's backwards compatible. So you can even go through this process, just generate those agreements on the fly and download it as Word documents. They look like nicely formatted Word documents that I would want to use in my practice, and then start, use that as a base. So that's a, one way to do it. We've also toured around this idea of a partial contract, 
So you can set like those predefined parameters. So you can say, I don't really care what the price is as long as it's in this range. So what, what company did that? That's Priceline. Right? Priceline pretty much uh, you know, built a partial contract. They said, uh, you know, party A, how much you're willing to rent out your hotel if it's within this specified range, you're welcome, like, regardless of the price. Uh, so you can begin to, I think, play around with different ways to negotiate, which I think are interesting. Uh, so you can do the same thing with clauses. You can say, I don't care which indemnity clause you, you pick, like we look for it, but let's assume you don't. Uh, and then depending on what you pick, or the counterparty picks, you can modify the rest of the agreement on the fly. So I think that that's one way to kind of start picking that uh, streamline things. So I think that that's something we do. Okay. So once you, it, once you want to sign these agreements, but this is amazing. You actually get an email that says you should sign it. This is like a really basic thing that I think is quite important. Uh, you, I'm already signed into the system under my username, but once you click it, it'll load up a page where you can review the documents, like you should, before you sign anything. I have a winner here, so I have to emphasize that. Um, and you can see the entire set of documents that was generated. Did you get it signed? Okay, great. Okay. So Jacqueline already signed it. Um, I'm going to sign it. So what's happening now is that we're reporting the digital signature to the Ethereum testnet blockchain. Uh, Jacqueline already signed it, and so that's what we've processed. You can see uh, evidence of that transaction. Uh, you can go Ether scan and just to see if that's actually being reported. And then once this hits, and it sometimes takes some time for it to hit, we can trigger not one smart contract, but two smart contracts. Uh, those two smart contracts. Um, if they catch up, you'll see that, that they'll call there will be separate calls that smart contract related to every minute or every two minutes. Um, let's see. Sure. All right, yeah. All right, so we saw before that Jane Smith didn't really have anything in her account. Uh, these calls to the smart contract are being made right now. Um, let's just that. Okay. Um, so once it gets processed, you'll see that James Smith's account will be automatically credited. And then if you let it running, if you left it running for a couple more minutes, you'll see that it will be credited. So just hit, let's see what the time is going to last for five minutes. So for 0.5 minutes, I don't know why that took me. It took me to work. We did this like 15 times, but it would work. I, I, guarantee, I guarantee it should work. But again, we're still in demo mode and we're doing a, a, a lot with it. But that's, you know, that's pretty much like a, a high-level high overview of OpenLaw. Happy to answer any questions if you have. to have a structured legal uh, document. That doesn't, that doesn't exist right now. I can't tell you at any point in time what's in an agreement in a, in a fairly quantified way. And that has a lot of costs for legal industry. So our thought is, instead of trying to apply uh, natural language processing or a, a fairly small set of data in order to structure these transactional documents, we should incentivize the lawyers to actually structure them off of that. And once we work with structured data, we can do a lot of fun things. So this is the first fun thing that we're doing with structured data. And another fun thing that we could do in the future is feed this into other systems. I think about the doctor assembly. I think about time the logic to uh, certain objects within, within these transactions. So that's where we are now. We've been doing this for, for two months, which is, I think, uh, notable. What is your anticipated response, to, or what response do you make from the legal profession with this when you talk about all these billable hours that they're doing, doing kind of busy work, charging a lot of money for it, I can imagine this might be somewhat controversial in some circles in a way that I think is awesome, but does everyone feel that way? Yeah, no, I think, I think that's, that's fair, but this is a conversation that's happening across the industry. I think, I think the problem is a lot of the legal automation tools that are out there, they're either incomplete or they're not, they're not fully integrated. So I think that this could be an advantage because it's kind of more of an end-to-end solution for us. Uh, but that means larger law firms can do low-level work that they don't do now because it's too expensive, and smaller law firms can do more smaller high volume work. So I think the bigger question is not really uh, what the lawyers think. It's, it's are people getting what they need? And ultimately, the lawyers serve the public, and, and they 
many things, but I think what's, what's interesting, you can begin to think a lot of, about a lot of the, the blockchain-based applications and models that have emerged over the past uh, couple months, and fundamentally, they're really just one contract. So Open Bazaar is just one contract. It could be just an API call uh, from something like OpenLock to manage the sale of tokens with a couple of smart contracts that are spread with them. So why would we need Open Bazaar? If you want to build out like a decentralized organization of some sort, you know, why do you need something like Argela? Uh, you can instead just make a call to one of our dealers and just spin them all up. So I think there's also a lot of untapped demand that 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 actually may benefit lawyers. Lawyers tend to seem to wait over time. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Aaron.